Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see. I hope the can as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, hey guys, thanks again for me for uh, inviting me, and I'm excited to be here. So today I'll be giving you a, a little bit introduction about uh, causal inference. Uh, yeah, so the cluster I was working on uh, crashed and I actually lost uh, part of my codes there. Uh, so uh, I was required to kind of give you uh, a course based on the real application. But for today, let's I'll be simulating some uh, another uh, another source. So for the sessions, uh, I. I thought uh, I have separated into three parts. It was an introduction, the first part, and I'll be giving you a high level introduction about causal inference and some examples, use cases uh, that uh, this causal inference, the idea of causal inference can fit in. <clears throat> and finally, I'll show you uh, the workflow for uh, implementation of causal, causal links. Yeah, so uh, let's dive to causal inference. Uh, so yeah, causal inference is a term used to for the process of determining whether an observed uh, association truly reflects uh, cause and uh, effect relationship. So the problems with uh, machine learning approaches, um, let's say if you see a correlation, that correlation does not necessarily mean a causation. Uh, this means like, let me give you one example uh, for uh, one use case. Uh, there was a skin cancer data, and in that case, skin cancer data, people were concluded using machine learning, ordinary machine learning. They plotted, uh, they, they, they have done some model and they plotted the feature importance, and with that feature importance, uh, they concluded that exercising uh, causes uh, skin, skin cancer. But that was not, uh, but that was not the fact. Uh, but the actual truth was people who exercise were exposed to sun sunlight. And that was the main reason. So if you assume uh, things in a deeper level uh, or those, le those uh, cases where uh, you, don't, you don't actually know uh, the results, it may be uh, misleading to say correlation. Uh, the correlation is actual the causation. And this is this may be due to some kind of random chance, like as like, like I said um, earlier. And the reason uh, on this is we are prone to be limited of having uh, cross-sectional data on a ra randomized con uh, control trial. And another example I can I can tell you here is uh, for uh, some day for one data, let's say. Uh, Let's say for uh, in the health department, uh, you'll be having. Uh, you can't ask a person to to to, to stop smoking cigarette so that you you see the effects of uh, uh, not smoking cigarette on uh, lung cancer. Same way as you can't ask a person to start smoking cigarette and see if uh, smoking cigarette will cause some kind of problem in him or uh, let's say the, the the lung cancer. So it's unethical to follow up. And even if we follow up, it's going to be uh, very resource intensive, meaning we'll, we'll have to invest lots of uh, millions and millions of dollars. Usually like collecting data, especially in the health industry is uh, of course funded, very funded, but it's, it's quite expensive. So it's going to be resource intensive. And even if uh, we manage to collect, uh, to collect uh, lots of data, uh, we can't be sure of all the confounding factors. So this is a very, uh, this is where causal inference like uh, actually study. So simulating uh, how classical machine learning approach limitation can be this scenario, right? So we, let's, uh, let's say we have a patient X and those X means like the variables and the variables we used are like age, age at diagnosis, is he a smoker or not, the educational status of that person, the BMI 
and the treatment type that he's currently having. And let, uh, let us feed this to some kind of machine learning model and try to identify the outcome Y, which is uh, the age at this due to cancer. And these, these, these models can be like regression, uh, these regression models can be, we can have lots of uh, models, maybe regression, maybe logistic, and the other models as well. But the limitation here is that uh, we need more than just a classification, uh, meaning, let's say, if you have the diagnosis, the, 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 the diagnosis type or the treatment type may be affected by the age. So you can't only change, you can't only change the age. Uh, if you change the age, you have to also change the treatment type and etc. things. This is one, one of the problems. The second problem is uh, correlation is usually calculated by uh, covariance, which which is let's say from the input variables, let's say the like the age, age of diagnosis, and etc. Uh, after you normalized it, the one that affects or if you change everything, every variable with uh, one scale, the one that really affects the output would be uh would be a highly correlated or would be judged as a highly correlated factor for the for the output variable but that may not be also the case uh, this is because it might be a confounding factor for another for, na for another situation or etc and the third one is uh, it, it might be difficult to add uh, experts opinion uh, you can't manipulate the data you just can fit the data to, to, to the model. And so with these uh, problems, it's, it's, it's going to be challenging to simulate uh, results of joint effects and interventions. So usually in public, uh, in public institutes, you, you're usually required to kind of provide a fact that if you intervene or if the public government or the, if the government or if that institutes uh, invested a lots of things for this, this this part of the community. We we may we may change the uh, we we may increase uh, people who who do not die uh, due to cancer or something like that. So usually are expected to provide these kinds of uh, facts. So uh, let's see how the same scenario with the same scenario the causal inference can 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 provide us. So the same uh, data is going to be available and we will not be giving that to a model, but rather for our inference engine. And that inference engine will be uh, predicting the outcome, Y, uh, which is the age of this due to cancer. And it's not uh, this what we want, but rather we can assist uh, and modify the relationship of the, the input variables via expert opinion or any other things that we want and we can see uh, we can apply Bayesian networks in conditional probabilities to see the joint effects of uh, the multiple variables and as i've told you earlier we can do uh, do interventions which is intervening and like uh, giving a fact that if we do something uh, we will uh, change the output of uh, the result so, yeah, so I recommend you to, to, to use uh, Causal Mix. Causal Mix is a library that's made by McKinsey uh, to provide this, uh, to, pro to provide all what I have told you earlier. And the one, the picture that you see in the right one is the one that I did for uh, the public health institutes. So usually, as you can see, we want to predict uh, children's under five who died and mostly it's affected by uh, breast like the if the mother uh, breastfeeds the child or the child or not and breastfeeding is affected by children who are under five and if she is living in urban or rural area uh, for this use case I, I was only able to give uh, this this may be due to a lack of data or uh, other reasons, maybe my normalization or other things. But this was what I provided. 
So usually uh, breastfeeding was affected by uh, number of children who are under five. This hypothesis provides that uh, the premise was like, if, uh, the, if the mother have lots of children under five, she probably won't be breastfeeding the child and that not breastfeeding the child will cause uh, this to the child. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is a high level implementation. Uh, so yeah, for uh, tips for your challenge, I, uh, as I've told you, I recommend you to use a causal links library and yeah, while working on it, uh, try to have uh, MVP. MVP means minimum viable products or uh, try to do uh, everything once and try to upgrade from the results that you have already gotten. And then uh, try to apply other machine learning techniques and apply like the feature importance and see the, 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 the discrepancy between them. And then uh, since this inference engine and etc. things is going to require a lot of, um, a lot of comp computational power, try to select limited number of variables uh, from your data set. Yeah, so this is what I have, and uh, let me show you uh, the implementation. Uh, it's on another time. Hello? Uh, hello? I want to add a bit. Yes, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> sorry. Okay. Yeah, you're holding. Okay, okay. Uh, does anybody have a question? Uh, up to now. Okay. So let me maybe jump into the implementation and let's see how you can implement it. Okay, you can see my screen, right? Yes, you can see the screen. Okay, thanks. So, uh, implementing causal inference uh, would be uh, would be a, a series of steps. Uh, so, I have tried to kind of generalize it into uh, four basic steps. The first step is going to be like loading the data and doing your EDA uh, and uh, if you can, you can also apply the machine learning techniques. And the thing is, for us, a machine learning engineer, you'll have to provide evidence to back up your uh, premises or your um, your initial thoughts. So those are the stories that you, you that you want want to tell. So if you use, uh, let's say, while encoding the data, or if you have a kind of uh, continuous data and if you group it into let's say three places you have to back up why you, you you group it into three places or you have to back up why you group it into five places and this is uh, the, the main thing that you can do uh, while exploring the data and then uh, you'll be building a structure uh, a structure or a graph that's going to be uh, simulated to show the, the causal inference or the joint effects on the output variable that you want. And then uh, on that graph, you'll be building a conditional probability uh, of a Bayesian network. And using that Bayesian network, uh, you'll have uh, some kind of model. And using that model, you can do, you can apply the interventions and etc. things. So it's basically four steps. So, on the data, uh, it's just simple. I didn't do that much. So as I've told you, this is not based on uh, real world data. Uh, it's uh, data. It's basically the one on the website, uh, on the causal next website. I will share the link uh, later on. So while building the structure, uh, there, there can be two things. So let's d dive into uh, the implementation in detail. So the first one is, as I've told you, just loading the data and uh, doing performing EDA. And then the next one is going to be uh, building the structure. So building the structure means you can, there are two basic uh, 
there are two ways you can do the structure. The first one is using a domain knowledge. Uh, uh, experts may recommend you to to draw the entire uh, the, the the entire uh, the entire relationship. Uh, yeah, and the next one can be uh, you can use much, you can use models to provide you the structure and test it uh, test the structure. So basically. Uh, you'll start with uh, initializing uh, an empty structure or an empty structure model and you can just add uh, the H just like this. So you'll have a health and it will be affecting the absence. And if you, let's say the premises, uh, if the person is not healthy, uh, it's, it's most probably is going to be uh, absent. And same goes to here. If the person is not healthy, uh, he will be, or he or she is going to be, uh, is going is not going to perform well on her first semester grade, and etc. Things. So while working as a machine learning engineer, you will be asking multiple questions with different uh, parts of uh, that um, that work, and try to fill this gap. This is the first way to do it, and it may be tedious, but you have to. You have to. It's a must. The next one is going to be using a uh, no tears algorithm, and with no tears, uh, it's a, it have two basic steps. The first is going to be uh, preparing the data for uh, the structure learning, and with that, it means like, firstly, you have to drop columns that are not relevant with uh, with your premises let's say the school type is not relevant to our pre with our premise uh, the, the sex age the mother's job the father's job and the reasons and the guardians are not related these are uh, hypotheses that, that you are going to be making and you have to tell these stories uh, later on after you get the results and then uh, with the remaining data, uh, with the remaining, is there any question? Yeah, excuse me, just can you zoom in a little bit? Just one. Ah, okay. okay, sure, 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 yeah. Can you see it now? Yeah, that's so much better, thanks. Okay, yeah, so for this, uh, I'll share you the, the, the Jupyter file. And you can also the CSV file, and you can access it by yourself. No worries. I'm just uh, trying to explain the general idea. So uh, the notier algorithm uh, needs uh, a number variables uh, or a number uh, category. Uh, cata it's not categorical, but rather a numerical values, right? So. We, we will have to encode uh, values that are not categorical in, in, in our data set. So if you have any data, you will, and if those data have some kind of um, other variables, uh, which are not numerical, you will have to encode them. So there are a lot of ways to encode. Uh, for this use case, uh, I use the label encoder, uh, but same here you'll have to back up your story when encoding the, 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 the data. And then after, and then, uh, after changing it into, uh, after changing into, it into a numerical values, you'll be applying uh, the notice algorithm. So using the causal links, uh, you'll import uh, from pandas and basically give your data to it. So, and then after that, uh, we'll be having a set of relationships uh, and you can plot it. Uh, the library to plot uh, hasn't worked for me uh, for now, uh, but you, you're able to plot it and show it to different stake stakeholders. So after having this uh, structure, uh, the structure meaning uh, these relationships, uh, there are three things that you can do. The first thing is uh, these structures have thresholds. So address with grade one uh, or the results after uh, the, 
yeah the results on period one and the results on period two and period three may not be relevant or uh, no for this case they have thresholds or weights uh, this graph or this relationship has a weight so you can remove uh, h that have thresholds below 0 0.8 and it will basically drop everything that uh, that is available uh, whose threshold is below 0 0.8 so initially this one will give us the entire relationship every every uh, input variable related with every input variable uh, but after you removing some uh, some relationships you will be remaining with uh, you'll be remaining with some uh, some relationships for me it was around uh, 21 uh, and another thing you can do is you can avoid uh, some kinds of relationships that doesn't make sense. Uh, let's say if let's say this is uh, one of the relationships that may happen that may be in the data, but you know it's not uh, correct. So the relationship is the wants to take the person wants to take a higher education, but that affecting the mother's education is highly unlikely so you can remove such kinds of things and rerun the model again uh, so while removing the threshold you can also implement it while building the the, the the structure and this is another way to do it and after uh, the structure has been built you can modify the structure using add h and remove h if you see uh, some kinds of uh, some kinds of things missed out uh, you can apply these things as well. Then we will have uh, we will have our structure. So after having our structure, uh, what we want to do is uh, we can have uh, we can see the stability of that graph. So let's say you do it once, and you'll have some kinds of structure. And if you redo it again. You'll, you'll probably have, is going to have uh, another structure. So how do you know if your structure is actually correct or not? Since this is based on uh, some kind of uh, algorithm, right? This is based on notice algorithm. And if you can also experiment or research some other algorithms to, to, check, uh, to build this structure. But after uh, having this structure, you'll have to check the stability of the graph. and what was recommended by uh, Jane Academy was to use uh, Jacob's similarity. And this one is basically will give it two graphs and uh, two basically sets. And then it will have the, inter it will really give you back the proportion of the, the similarity of their, uh, the H or basically the sets. So, uh, after having the, the 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 structure initially, what uh, we did was we cut the data into we cut we took only sixty percent of the data and did the same uh, did the same analysis or did, did the same structure and gives the structure of the sixty percent of the data uh, with the original structure and see the jack the chart similarity. And with that, you'll have to have uh, some kind of maybe 60 or 70 percent similarity. If that's not the case, that means uh, the structure may probably not be a correct one. So you may have to revise your encodings and exit trackings. So that's uh, that's a very basic uh, thing to do. So after having these valid reasons, we can say we will have. Uh, our structure or we will be having uh, our structure then thirdly will be uh, after having that structure we'll be providing that to a Bayesian network Bayesian network means that basically you'll be providing a conditional probability to the to the H and still using the causal needs you can provide the, the structure model and it will give you the Bayesian network and for modeling, you will have to discretize the original data. You can use the the, the encoding or the discretization 
uh, you used previously while building the structure, but it's usually recommended to redo uh, the, the discretization uh, in the original data. Uh, basically, for some variables, for, uh, for the variables that are uh, not discrete. And you can use uh, the causal next discretizer uh, function and kind of provide it with, uh, with the necessary values. And let's say for this, for the absence, uh, we can provide it with uh, a numeric split point of uh, one up to 10. This means we will have one category which is lower than one and the other category between one and 10 and the other category greater than 10. Uh, same goes to uh, G1 uh, having 10, which is below 10 and above 10. And same, uh, same goes to others. You can also do with other techniques. Uh, sklearn also have its own uh, API or uh, kind of module. You can also use that, but it's usually um, recommended to use, to finish it up on one library. So after creating uh, your data, uh, it's better to have uh, labels for your output variables. Let's say for our, uh, for our case, for G1 map means zero means fail and one means pass. And this uh, for a real world application, you can say uh, you can't put diet for a column and diet, you can't put zero and one and just present that. You have to, uh, you have to say uh, died or no died or a lie or something like that. So you basically be creating labels and then uh, you will, will have to kind of uh, split the data, the one that we have discretized uh, into two parts, a, t a test and a train. And for the Bayesian network that we have created earlier, we'll be providing, so the first part, the first part is going to be fifth node states. This means you'll provide the discretized data and the discretized data, the entire discretized data, so that it's, it knows the entire possibility of uh, the output variables or, and also the input variables. And then uh, for the conditional probabilities, so fit conditional probability, we'll provide it with uh, the train data and you can have multiple kinds of estimators according to the statistics uh, and then provide the model. So how do you know uh, if that model is actually good or not? You will perform a, a classification report or some kind of other report uh, on your test data. And uh, for this case, we use the classification report, but it's, you can use the SKLN again. Uh, of course, these results are not uh, founding results. Uh, and yeah, on your, uh, on your projects, you have to make them uh, sounding. But for the MVP or for the minimum viable product, you can just do it, uh, you can just implement it. And then later on, try to kind of adjust your encodings so that to have a precision recall, a point score and other matrices, uh, I have, a higher uh, quality or model quality matrices. So after having this model, uh, the final thing we will be doing is uh, we'll be querying uh, our inference engine or the model. Uh, so the inference will have other uh, module called inference engine from the causal links. Uh, library and we'll be providing it a model, the model that we have, the vision model that we have uh, built earlier. This vision model, uh, this vision network consists of the structure that we have built and the kind of joint probabilities and we'll provide it to the inference inch and we'll be querying the, the data right away. So for this case, uh, let's say G1, we queried, uh, G1 marginals, uh, the, we will call the inference engine and call the query function. 
and then we can print uh, basically uh, every column's marginals and as you can see for the discretized data we have these kinds of uh, these kinds of value counts for g1 and these results are almost the same as uh, the ratio of let's say for the field uh, 142 divided by uh, 142 plus 253 is around 0.35 percent or as a 35.7 percent and same goes to the past uh, 64 64.2 percent so this is not uh, so the things that we have done here is just a proof so the main things come here uh, while doing interventions or while doing the do calculus so if you do if you do let's say if most of the most of the students want to pass or want to learn up to a higher education which is we made uh, yes 100% and no uh, 0% and then query the data and see the marginal of fires it's going to be around 1.000%, this will be adjusted later on. But earlier on, we had around 5% uh, for no and 94% uh, for yes. This is still uh, not the thing that we want, but the one that we want is uh, this one, the effect of the do calculus on the marginals of uh, the as uh, the, the, the output results that we want to see so let's say for the first case uh, we have students that want to go uh, to a higher education and we'll do uh, an intervention for the higher column and we'll provide it with us a dictionary uh, the 100 percent for yes and uh, like zero percent no this means like all the students want to learn uh, in the higher education and zero percent or no student want do not want to learn uh, on the higher education so uh, we can see that we and then we can query the inference engine for the g1 result so for the g1 result so earlier on we queried uh, the g1 result which was around 35 percent of the students will be failing and 64 percent of the students will be passing based on the current data but after doing this intervention or after doing this uh, after doing this intervention whatever the case is uh, we will ha we'll be having around 31.15 percent um, to fail and 64.84 percent to, fail, uh, to pass the uh, to pass g1 uh, examination so this means this may not be a big number but uh, as you can see, the failed students have decreased from 35.7% uh, to 35.1%, uh, which is around 0.6%. So if you think of it uh, in Hal's perspective or in any other, pers in any other um, uh, field, uh, if you are able to kind of decrease the output variable with some kind of, uh, with some kind of result, with let's say 0.6 percent and if you do the calculation let's say number of children who are who are being born per day which are in ethiopia here in ethiopia it's around 10,000. and if you are able to uh to update or to kind of increase uh, the number of children who do not die uh, while while giving birth with 0.1 percent that means a lot of Lots of children are going to be saved using these kind, these kinds of interventions. And these kinds of interventions are usually the ones, the variables that you that you think could be intervened and could someone uh, do. So I'll provide you with this uh, code snippet and <clears throat> the data. It's not uh, the original data or the data that we used in the Public Health Institute. Uh, this one is the one that you can get on the official website. But uh, this was uh, what I understood. Yeah. I'll be Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you.
for that. I see the questions have already started on the chat. So you can just go ahead and take the questions. Okay. Questions now. Yeah, so we used a uh, causal mix. Uh, okay, let me show you the link. Adjet, yeah, okay. What exactly is interventions to do here? Can you repeat how you perform the do calculus? Okay, so interventions means, uh, let, let's see, let me explain it. Uh, but let me first explain it using the ordinary machine learning. So you have some kind of uh, data, and then you have a model, and then you predict the, the, the outcome, right? And then let's say to do an intervention mean, uh, meaning you'll have to change the entire uh, the entire input of one column and see the result of the output column or the output the target variable. So with that. It's going to be, uh, it's not going to be, uh, a jo you're not going to be seeing a joint effect of uh, the results. So let's say for the earlier example that I've showed you on the, on the cancer, the age at this at cancer, uh, due to cancer, uh, let's say you intervened and changed the treatment type into one specific, uh, inter uh, in one specific uh let's say treatment type but that's uh, actually wrong because treatment types are usually affected by uh, the age of diagnosis and the maybe i don't know sex or the, the, the blood type or etc things right so interventions are usually done to kind of uh, provide you uh, what if if we have done something what would have been the results uh, or what would have been the output of the variables. So if we want to see again, let me show you again. So here, uh, firstly, we, uh, we queried the G1 or the, the score of the children's uh, on semester one, it was around the marginals were around 35%, 35.7% uh, failed, and 64.23 uh, to 7% uh, passed the first semester. Um, the first semester questions, or let's say semester, and this is basically the numbers. So you can uh, count. The, the number of children or the number of people who have passed the first semester and divided by the total number of uh, people who have taken the semester. And those are the marginals for the past and the marginals for the failed is the same, the reverse one, right? And then we did an intervention for the inter using the intervention uh, engine, uh, within using the inference engine we did an intervention on the column and higher. Higher means uh, higher education. Number, uh, like the interest of a person to be engaging in higher education. So using some kind of magic or some kind of intervention or some kind of policy, we, we, we made uh, the entire population of, uh, the entire population to, to be saying yes for a higher education. So this and 0% of course for uh, not saying, I do not want to go to a higher education. So after doing an intervention, we will query the output variable and see the marginals. So as you can see, we have, uh, we have increased from 64.2% to 64.8% uh, upgrading number of children, the number of people who passed the first semester and the reduction in number of uh, people who have failed uh, the, the, the failed the semester. So let's say you can also adjust these numbers, uh, let's say 0.75 or 75 percent uh, to say we will want we want to go to a higher education and 25 percent uh, to say no. 
in the, the, the effects of the marginal. So you can do these interventions for every column and see which intervention can can do uh, a higher or can bring a higher impact for your uh, result or let's say for this case you want to increase the number of children the number of people who pass the first uh, semester right so if you do if you do these kinds of interventions for every column that you have using this uh, inference engine and see the output that's going to be uh, a good result and you can kind of back up your back up your uh, your premises or your ideas. Yeah, uh, in Tina, have I spelled it correctly? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's fine. Uh, yeah. So my question is, when you did this. Uh, intervention for high education and you set uh, it to one and zero uh, when you looked at the higher education distribution you you got uh, one but point point uh, point zero 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 seven it was not one exactly why is that it's yeah, not yeah. Um, yeah that's a good question it's not as simple uh, as it. but uh, Yes, yes, exactly. That's a good question. So the thing is, uh, this uh, causal inference is under, it's not uh, something that has been done, that has been finalized. It's still under research and different uh, like institutes have invested to kind of further this, um, this research. So basically this mod, uh, this, uh, this library was made by McKinsey and it's most probably due to uh, some kind of error in the library, but uh, you you have to kind of uh, see these kinds of results after uh, after you did uh, your projects. But that's a good one. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Anyone else? Okay, I think uh, I'm done. So I'll be sharing the these two the data. In, you can see it uh, in the website that I've shared you earlier. Uh, also, I will like I I will attach you the the Jupyter file and the CSV file uh, so that you can you can access it and see it in a clear way. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Anastasia. Okay, so thank you. I don't know if there's any more questions or um, we can end it there. I hope you've been able to learn something, something you can actually use for this week's challenge. If there's nothing more to add, maybe if there's nothing more to add, I think we can just end it. And there, thank you so much, Biniam, for just being with us for the last one up uh, and giving us a guide on how to do this because of X, considering you have this application, something with real data in the real world. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see thank yous are coming on the chat. So I think that would be it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks, guys, for also being here. Bye. Cheers. Bye.